the process for creating the, sh for creating the show, for creating Clip is, um, is always a fab process at doing any show. Um, we had a lot of um, newspaper articles, um, information, factual information about what actually happened. Um, and then we did improvisation. So we came up with stories based on the factual information that we had. Uh, one of the interesting things I, I found about the process is the it actually is the improvisation. We'll suddenly think of maybe something that would happen in a scene. And quite often people will go back on their old memories of what life was like when they were children. Or sometimes I'll, I'll reference things that my mum told me about when she was a child. So things that would have happened in that sort of era. As part of the process, we learnt about um, the jobs that women would have had, apart from being a cookie, and one of them was being a maid. Um, I really wanted to bring this in as part of my character to kind of show the start of what one of the main jobs would have been for women back then. And it was quite interesting because then towards the end, when obviously being a cookie it wasn't as great because of the way they were treated, she then had no choice but to then go back to being a maid. Well, I'm going to work back for Madam. I went to Jay this morning, had to do a bit of calling. I bet she loved that. <laughs> oh, she did, but she took me back again. Got me polishing that whole floor. You should see how shiny it is. I hope she slips and breaks her neck. <laughs> <laughs> what I really enjoyed about the process of um, creating clippies was that we worked um, really closely in family groups from the very start. So we got to know our groupings quite well and as we came back each week we it was like going deeper and finding out more about each other. In the play Clippies I, um, I'm a maid and um, we were devising one week and we were thinking about maybe I should make a bread roll because um, my niece is so hungry and we showed Ingrid it and she really liked it and she went away and found out a real true story of a maid who um, nicked silver knives, forks, spoons, whatever she could get hold of, I think, to get extra money to pay medicine for the doctor. And that was included in the play, and that helped the development of the, um, my role as the maid very well. Alice, you know when you took those bread rolls? You did stop, didn't you? I mean, you didn't take anything else. I don't know what you mean. Well, it's just that I found a bag of silver in my cupboard. I didn't put it there, and it didn't just appear. How did it get there, Alice? Where did it come from? All right, I've taken a few things. You never notice it. She's got so much stuff. What does she need with silver knives and forks anyway? Alice, you can't just go taking stuff. That's so why I learned that um, women didn't get as much money as men did, and. Um, in the 1920s, they didn't really have the same clothes as well. So I learned that doctors had to like, came to your house, and I also learned that you had to pay for medicine. What I learned during the devising process is um, we were given a lot of um, sort of accounts from the time and paperwork and things, and um, it was just kind of the attitude of Bristol towards the women and how quickly that changed. Um, when we first got our jobs, we were heroines doing our bit for the war effort. Everyone was full of praise. And I was proud, proud to be doing my bit to help. I love traveling around Bristol, see different people every day. The smell of the trams, tobacco and leather, and that war when it rains. Then of course there's the money. But, well, feelings have changed recently. It started with whispers, people rolling their eyes. But they stopped trying to hide it. They want people to hear. And it's not just words anymore. Someone spat at me the other night. On the last shift, the last tram back to the depot, spat at me. I'd never seen him before. I don't want to see him again either. One thing that I did find surprising were, was how quick um, other women judged the women that were working on the trams because they were dressed smartly, um, they obviously had their hair done, they were wearing lipstick, so they were immediately assumed that they were shameless hussies or, or tarts and things like that because they wanted to earn money and go out um, and, and just dress nicely. I think that was quite sad. 
Oh, I do hope not. I'm in a hurry. <laughs> Did you see that lot swanning around? What lot swanning around? Gather the clippies, all dolled up and lips as red as devilment. <laughs> <laughs> they have no shame in it. They're daughters of sin, each and every one of them. What's a daughter of sin? Never you mind for So I think what I found most surprising um, was the fact that women were opposed to other women progressing. So the women that wanted jobs on the trams um, and wanted a bit of a chance to earn some money were opposed by other women. I think what um, surprised me about being in the play was finding out how difficult it was for people to aspire to be um, other than, than what they were. It was difficult to have a dream and to um, sort of climb outside the box that you were in. The thing that surprised me most about the um, Clippist story was just how they were treated. Um, it was disgusting. Like, if you think today, people would be going mad. It'd be all over Instagram, Facebook. People just wouldn't stand for it. So I think we have come forward, but I think there's still a lot more work to do. Uh, Henry, my character, he, um, he fought in the First World War and uh, he came back a changed man. He was mentally damaged, really badly damaged. Um, I think what we would call it now is probably PTSD, but it wasn't given any kind of name back then. He, he was just looked at as someone who was just, well, uh, difficult to describe. He got, never got any kind of treatment for it at all. He wasn't recognised as someone who had an illness, and he had to deal with that. I put your daughter had taken the jobs away from the men. My daughter is working for a better life for herself. A better life than you'll ever have. There's nothing wrong with my life. That's not what I've heard. Stop it! Stop shouting! Stop fighting! Stop it! It's right, Henry. It's okay, Henry. It's okay. We'll get off here, Mike. He's not safe to be around. <coughs> He's been locked up somewhere. Plenty of room for men like him in my workhouse. So the thing that surprised me was that the things that were quite similar from back then to now. So like the poverty and like women's rights and women not getting paid as much as men. Like you would just, I just thought that a hundred years on we would have been a little bit more advanced than where we are. So things that are similar now to what it was a hundred years ago is that um, poverty I think is very similar. Although it was much more visible a hundred years ago, it does still exist, but it's much more hidden. Well, what I found distressing was how the clippies were treated back then. They got spat at, they got just verbal abuse shouted at them, and one of them actually had grip thrown in her face. And my character Stan, his sister's also a clippie, and he would worry about her. What are you doing, you stupid boy? That Jimmy Johnson, see, is just a bad lot. You need to report it. What have you done, you naughty, silly boy? I said I'd do it. Man doesn't go back on his word. That's what Dad told me before he's left. Never go back on your word. So um, the part of the play that I found um, most distressing was definitely it's um, my scene that I play with um, Tracy, and it's uh, based on a true story where a, uh, a war widow has her son taken away and put into the workhouse for. Um, well, no good reason, and that's the, th that's the thing that devastated me more than anything, is these children were ripped away from other people, from their homes. He's just a boy. Just a boy that gets into scrapes. He's just a bad boy, and now he needs to go where bad boys go. I want to stay with Come you. along. I want to stay with you, Mark. Please, don't, please, Margaret, don't, please don't do this. Mrs Johnson, think of your boy for once. Let him go. Come on, Jimmy. You be a good boy. You go with Mrs. Jones. I want to stay with you, Mum. Please. Come along, Mrs. Johnson. This is not helping. Let him go. Please, Mum. Come along. Oh, Jimmy, it'll be alright. Mum. Come. Please, Mum. Mum. It was really 
important to have children in the show. Um, I think it brought out different characteristics that perhaps wouldn't have been um, illustrated in any other way. So, for example, we had Annie, who was the eight-year-old little girl who was dying um, and very sick, you know, and that brought out a side of her aunt who stole to get food for her and it brought out other characteristics of the community who came together to pay for a doctor for her. Um, and I don't think that that aspect of community would have um, worked as well without, without Annie. Part of the show, there was children in the show, and there was the parents who were single parents, and I can relate to how they struggled back then, to me struggling a bit now. The being able to have sort of young children performers in the play rather than it just would never have worked if any of us had obviously tried to play a younger character or or I don't think it would have worked the same if we just sort of reference the children about their out playing or they're they're up in their rooms ill or whatever. I don't think it would have made any of the story as sort of hard hitting as a lot of the points were. Um, I think children were definitely an important part of the play. It added another layer to people's characters. I think it really helped show the class divide that was prominent um, post-war. Um, you know, my character's daughter had sweets constantly, was very self-assured, had lovely dresses, um, and you know, she was on the promise to a better life, and that that was very much how it looked. And then you had the other children who came from the poorer backgrounds with women who were war widows, straight scraping to get by, and, you know, for their, their outlook was bleak, and it, it really showed the contrast. Without those children, I don't think you would have seen that quite as obviously. What do you want, Ruby? Just got some sweets. Where'd you get those? <laughs> My mum. You had sweets yesterday. It's not fair. I don't care. You should ask your mums to buy you sweets. They're on the widow's pension, they've got no money. Well, my ma works at the workhouse, so she gets lots of money. Well, I suppose I tried to identify with Bill and, and where he was at, at that particular period in time. Thinking about where they were in the First World War, but more importantly, where he was as a man, in the sense of it was the man's responsibility to look after the family and it was the man's responsibility to have the work and to have this conflict of, of women working um, was something that he just didn't accept and, and, and couldn't accept it. Bill, how did you get on today? Did you get any work? Oh, you had to stop getting on at me. I mean, I'm doing the best I can. I mean, I was down at Evenmouth Docks at 7 o'clock this morning, standing in a pen with 50 other men. 20 got picked, but they didn't pick me. I mean, why did they not pick me? I mean, what is wrong with me? Oh, look, there's nothing wrong with you, love. Look, I know I might be a wee bit older, but I can still do a good as job as them. It's about time I had a job. Well, something will come along, and anyway, we're all right. We've got our Betty's money coming in. Well, that's all very well, but I've been on the dole now for ten weeks, and I've only got five weeks left. You know, I've got to get something soon before it stops. I could always get a better paid job. Better <laughs> 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 <a> paid job? <laughs> Thing is, Bristol Tramways are looking for conductors. Tramways. On the trams? No daughter of mine is working on the tram. But it's much for money. I don't care if they pay you gold. A woman should not be taking a job that a man should be doing. A job that I should be doing. I really wanted to play this character because I can relate to her in the fact that I feel very strongly about women having an equal right to men. I always have from very small. And I liked her because she she's a bit stronger than me in the fact that she fight and she has the confidence to speak up and lead people. Well, 
I can relate to my character on one point. Uh, being unemployed, I've been unemployed, I was unemployed for quite a long time. Um, that's the, the similarities between then and now. Like unemployment is still a big issue, and you know, there's just not very many jobs from very many people back then. There wasn't very many, especially for the, the soldiers coming back, where once they had jobs, and now they got nothing, and the frustrations and anger is just building up. And I can relate to that on that level. Dad! Dad! What is it, Ma? What have you been doing all day? I've been out looking for work, washing the pots, and drying the clothes, and all of a sudden that stupid wrangle wrangle come off again! But I told you how to fix it! Well, just get rid of this stupid bloody thing, we don't need it! Look. If I'm going to have to go out to work every day, you're going to have to do something around this house. I can't come home to a freezing cold house with no fire and filthy pots and no laundry done. Your sister will be home soon and she'll be hungry. Oh yes, the golden child. She's got a job. Go for her. You know what? I served this country out there risking my life and I come back to no job and no money. You know what? We're sick and tired of hearing how you went off and served this country. What did you say? You don't know what me and your sister did to serve this country. You don't know what it was like. Well, the people starved. They were, you know that? They weren't getting shot at them, were they? They weren't getting blown up and gassed and drowning in mud. I, I saw things I'll never forget. Never forget until the day I die. And what was the point? What was the point? What have you done for us lately? You never had to work until now. Dad was the one going out to work, keeping this house, this family together. You never had to lift a finger, and he gave his life for you! What are you grateful? Any of you grateful? So I do sympathise with my character Phyllis to a certain extent, particularly in relation to her relationship with her son, who was played by Jake. Um, Phyllis was trying to go out to work, she was trying to help the local community, she was bandaging her neighbour's arm, she was trying to do everything and then she was coming home to a son who in her eyes had been sitting around not doing very much and I think certainly in these Covid times being an NHS worker um, you know there are times when if I'd come home to a son or a partner who'd been working from home or you know unemployed that would have been quite frustrating much as I would have understood and appreciated that that wasn't a good experience for them. Um, you know, me being trying to do everything, I, I could relate to, yeah, to Phyllis in that situation. I guess I was really surprised in some ways of how easy Bill, being a trade union leader, could really whip up this crowd and, and they, they, they went mad uh, and, you know, they, they created havoc. I mean, um, law-abiding citizens were just wound up. There was so much aggression towards everything that was happening. The deputation has broken to Bristol tramways and demanded that they sack the clippies and give their jobs to the ex-servicemen. What did they say? They wouldn't listen. What? They refused the ultimatum. They won't sack the clippies. Oh, oh, yes. Yes. Let us show them what we think of that yes. decision. I found the Clippers scene, the riot scene, really, really upsetting. Um, these women were young women, they were teenagers, they just wanted to spy in their life, they wanted to do good in their life, they wanted a good job, and they wanted to be independent women. And I think the way they were treated was just horrible, and I just wonder whether that would happen these days. So part of the research is when there was these riots of the tramways and what shocked me the most, it wasn't just all these people that turned on us, it was families, women who worked in the office and you would have thought that these women would have been supporting us, cause, but they didn't, they didn't care. <laughs>
Um, what we wanted to, the audience to feel uh, is shock um, as to what it was like back then for the women. You know, it was it was horrible. They were treated really, really badly. And um, I think as we were doing the process of it, that's what I was thinking of all the time, is what do I want just the audience to feel? And I think was the, the word was shock. You know, thinking, crikey, were they really treated that badly uh, back then, back in the early 20s? So what I felt the play did really well is it explored um, different people's viewpoints. So on one hand, I felt sorry and I could empathise with the women for not having, you know, having done the particular roles and then being thrown to one side once the men came back from the war. But on the other hand, how the men felt, how... You know, they'd gone and fought for their country and they came back to no jobs. I think it really got across well with different people's feelings and how unfair it was to all. I think for me, the message of the play was about community. You know, there wasn't the National Health Service, there was the workhouse, things that we just hear about but can't possibly imagine what that was like. You know, Bill and his loses his best friend, Big Tom. A terrible situation. Through starvation, no, no employment. So, and also the sense that the community came together when they didn't have the National Health Service. How they cared for each other, how they saved a bit of food or they gave a little bit of money. There was a sense of community and in some respects even from what we've experienced now in COVID, there was a, there was a sense of community that, that pulled people together. She won't take anything, I've tried. Don't think, <laughs> don't think like this, Grace. The doctor will be here soon. I can't afford the doctor. It's all paid for. We all put something in the pot, adopted a collection from the Clippy Girls. I know you don't like it, Grace, but it's for the little girl, not for you. And you can't refuse it, Grace. But I can't repay you. You do the same for us. For me, the end of it, I think, is about people's choices. What you choose to do in life. My character chose to be involved in the riot and not agree with the girls working. And at the end of it, she was sorry that the girls were so badly treated and abused and everything else, we should have time to think about it. So I, I think we need to think long and hard about the choices that we make and the actions that we do. So I think the play is about people standing up to what they believe in. Like the Clippies stood up when they were attacked on the trams and the men stood up about losing their jobs. For me, I feel what the play leaves you with, what, it, what, what the audience you know, are left with is the fact that we're still fighting. Even a hundred years later, we're still fighting for things, the injustice of life. The message I would love people to go away from with this play is, although it hasn't got there yet, it does get better, and there's always hope, and as long as we as a community and people stay together, um, there's always hope. I don't think it's so much about a message as a question, and I think the question is, have things really changed? If we keep fighting, who knows what we might be able to achieve? Believe me, it won't always be like this. I promise you, a hundred years from now, it will all be different. We'll be treated the same as men, have the same rights, same pay for the same jobs, and we'll get top jobs, share the power. It will be different. We may have lost this battle, but all it shows us is how much more we need to do. We have to keep going. We have to keep fighting. <coughs> yes, the war might be over, but ours isn't. I don't think our fight is over yet. <laughs>